Hi guys and girls and welcome to everything in Middle Earth and in today's video I'm going to be telling you guys what happened to the Fellowship of the Ring after the return of the King. The first character up is Legolas. After the destruction of the One Ring and of Sauron, Legolas stayed for the coronation of Aragorn II, Alasar, and his marriage to Arwen. Later he and Gimli travelled together to Helm's Deep, visiting the Glycerin Caves. Now I think that's where Eowyn stayed with the women and children during the Battle of Helm's Deep. And then, later, he and Gimli travelled through Fangorn Forest. Eventually, Legolas came to Ithilien with some of his people, with his father's leave to live out his remaining time in Middle-earth, helping to restore the woodlands that had been war-torn. After Aragorn's death, Legolas made a ship in Ithilien and left Middle-earth to go over the sea. His strong friendship with Gimli prompted Legolas to invite him to go to the Undying Lands, making him the first and only dwarf to do so. He was never seen again in Middle-earth. Next character up is Aragorn. Upon Sauron's defeat, Aragorn was crowned as King Alasar, a name given to him by Galadriel. He became the 26th King of Arnor, 35th King of Gondor and the first High King of the Reunited Kingdom though it would be several years before his authority was firmly re-established in Arnor. Aragorn married Arwen shortly afterwards and ruled the Kingdom of Gondor and Arnor until 120 of the Fourth Age. His reign was marked by great harmony and prosperity within Gondor and Arnor and by a great renewal of cooperation and communication among men, elves and dwarfs fostered by his vigorous rebuilding campaign following the war. Aragorn led the forces of the reunited kingdom on military campaigns against some Easterlings and Haradrim, re-establishing rule over much territory that Gondor had lost in previous centuries. In the year 120 of the Fourth Age, King Alasar realised his days were at an end. He went to the house of the kings in the silent street, he said farewell to his son Aldarion and his daughters and gave Aldarion his crown and scepter. Arwen remained at Aragorn's side until he died. Shortly a year after Aragorn died, Arwen soon died of a broken heart. That's quite sad actually. Not in a sad like, oh that's just sad, but that's quite, you know that's a touching scene that would have been in the movie. Aldarion began his reign as the second king of the reunited kingdom of Gondor after his father's and mother's death. Next up is Gandalf. Now, I do warn you guys and girls, there's not a lot of information about him. So, four years after the ring was destroyed, Gandalf spent some time with Tom Bombadil. Then, after having spent over 2,000 years in Middle-earth, departed with Frodo, Gladwell, Caliborn, Bilbo, Alrond across the sea to the Undying Lands and was never seen again in Middle-earth. Following Gandalf we have Gimli. After the war Gimli led a large number of Durin's folk south to establish a new dwarf kingdom in the Glittering Caves which were located behind Helm's Deep where Gimli was trapped during the battle and he became the first Lord of the Glittering Caves. The dwarfs of the Glittering Caves, led by their Lord Gimli, would repair much of the physical damage that was suffered during the War of the Ring. Most notably, they rebuilt the Great Gate of Minas Tirith with a new one made of mithril and steel, as well as improving upon the existing layout of the entire city. His date of death is not known, and according to the Red Book of Westmarch, he is said to have travelled with Legolas into the West thus becoming the first dwarf to visit the Undying Lands. Next up is Frodo. After recovering in Minas Tirith and witnessing the coronation of King Aragorn, Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin all returned to the Shire. When they arrived though, they found it under the control of a man named Sharky, later revealed to be Saruman, and his forces. Saruman was ruling the Shire from Bag End, although he was later murdered by Grima Wormtong. Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin, however, started to gather all the sheriffs and townsfolk in the Shire, and they successfully defeated the ruffians employed by Sharky at the Battle of Bywater. 
Frodo wasn't directly involved in the fighting at the Battle of Bywater. Instead, he made sure that no hobbits were harmed, saying that no hobbit had ever intentionally harmed another in the Shire, and that it was not going to begin there, and also that any ruffians that surrendered were not harmed. Frodo briefly served as deputy mayor of the Shire, but soon realised that he still bore the wounds of his quest, and so retired. He was also in continual pain from his shoulder wound, which pained him each anniversary of their stay on Weathertop. On September the 22nd of September, at the age of 53, Frodo joined Bilbo aboard an Alvin ship. He was allowed passage across the sea to the Undying Lands as he was a ring bearer, with the hope of healing the damage to his spirit that bearing the ring had caused. Sometime after the year 61 in the Fourth Age, fellow ring bearer and best friend Samwise Gamgee reunited with Frodo in the Undying Land, where it was presumed they lived out the remainder of their days. After the War of the Ring and the end of the Third Age, Sam married Rose, Rosie Cotton. They had 13 children, Eleanor the Fair, Frodo, Rose, Mary, Pippin, Goldilocks, Hamfast, Daisy, Primrose, Bilbo, Ruby, Robin and Tollman. When Frodo Baggins announced that he was leaving to the Undying Lands west of Middle Earth, he gave Sam the Red Book of West March and the household of Bag End, where he and his large personal family, later called the Gardeners, would live for many years. After Will Whitfoot resigned his post as Mayor of Michael Dalving, Sam was elected Mayor of the Shire for seven consecutive seven-year terms. After his wife died, in the year 61 of the Fourth Age, Sam entrusted the Red Book to his daughter, Eleanor, and left the Shire. He was allowed to pass over the sea to be reunited with Frodo in the Undying Lands. Next up, we have Pippin. After the restoration of the monarchy, King Alasar knighted him and granted him and his fellow hobbits leave to return home, as well as leave to return to Gondor whenever they liked. Later he, Mary, Frodo and Sam were instrumental in overthrowing the small remainder of Saruman's forces during the scouring of the Shire. In the sixth year of the Fourth Age, Pippin married Diamond of Longcleave. When she was 32 and himself was 37, they had one son, Faramir Took, who later married Samwise Gamgee's daughter, Goldilocks Gardner. In the year 13, Pippin became the 32nd Thane of the Shire, a position he held for 50 years before retiring in the year 63. When he revisited Rowan and Gondor with Mary, he remained in Gondor for the rest of his life. Pippin probably died sometime after the year 64 and was laid to rest with Mary in Gondor. After Aragorn had died in the year 120, Mary and Pippin were entombed next to the great king. And finally, we have Mary. Now after the return of the king, King Eomer, as the new king of Rowan, knighted him and gave him the name of Holdwine. During the scouring of the Shire, he was in the forefront of the Battle of Bywater, using the Horn of Rowan presented to him by Eowyn. Upon their return, he and Pippin both got married to beautiful hobbit women. Mary married Estella Bolger some time after the end of the Third Age. He became the Master of Buckland in the year 11. He wrote old words and names in the Shire. Although he was not recorded as having any children within the family trees, he clearly had at least one son. At the age of 102, he returned to Rohan and Gondor with Pippin, dying there around the year 64 of the Fourth Age. He was laid to rest in Gondor, and when Alasar died, he and Pippin were entombed beside the great king. Right then guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please do support my channel by clicking the bell button so you get the latest notifications on my channel. Please comment in the comment section. Please like, please subscribe and don't forget at 10k subscribers, I'll be dyeing my hair any colour that you choose. So leave it in the comment section and thank you so much. Peace.